Oh, it's been a long time since I actually did one of these episodes of Zorch Vlog. can't remember the last time I actually did something in this format before. Uh, I think... Actually, no, it was somewhat fairly recently. You can see I've got a new chair right here. Finally got a new one. It's still creaky. <laughs> but uh, what I'm trying... What I'm here to talk to you about is uh, network stuff. Now, I am supposed to be streaming Beat Saber this morning. And I'm going to hold off on that for a bit. Because we're not on our regular network equipment. What's going on is, well, our ISP had been under maintenance for like an entire week. So we were having connection issues, which is one of the reasons why I haven't been streaming as much when I said I was going to be streaming. I wanted to stream this weekend, but I wanted to do it during the day because I got more people watching during the day than I did you know, at night, and we couldn't maintain a reliable connection during the day, so I couldn't stream. So, what we've got on order now is we've got a instead of getting a pro sumer router, we've got something that is enterprise grade coming. I mean, this thing you've got to know what you're doing to configure this thing. It doesn't have Wi-Fi, so we have to get a ubiquity hotspot in order to cover the house. And so we've got one of those coming as well. Now well, until we get that stuff set up and running, um, I won't be able to do any live streams reliably. Now we're on an old Netgear router right now. We had two. This new router will allow us to do everything on one router that we wanted to do because it, it's that powerful um but the old ones these were netgear devices one was the one was the nighthawk and another one was i don't remember the name of the other one but the other one was an older one they were both more than five years old the nighthawk that died that we were on that one no not not nighthawk blackhawk yes blackhawk that one that died um on the day i wanted to do a live stream actually and that was last week when it did we had to move over to the other one and the other one was handling our dmz it was on a completely different subnet so we're currently on that one. Well, we've turned the DMZ off, but we're on that one now. And we got some protection from it, but it was an extra layer of protection for our own home network here, where we were, we had one router and then it bridged to another one. And the other one was your regular network configuration for everything and it had our Wi-Fi for our phones and everything so we don't have Wi-Fi right now but um, we ordered a new Netgear router a new Blackhawk new updated version of what we currently had and when we went to configure it when Tiger went to configure it as he's more familiar with the networking side than I am he ran into a problem you are required before you can even get to the settings screen before they even let you go to the settings screen you're required to sign in on a remote website with create an account on a remote website in order to access the settings on the router and that's a no no a lot of them are starting to do that a lot of the prosumer routers are starting to do that the gamer ones where they will lock certain features behind paywalls like tp link was starting to lock you know quality of service which is important for you know playing games q 
QoS. Important for playing games, they'll lock that behind a paywall where you have to pay a subscription for a service on a device that you own that is supposed to be there. That is a, a feature on a device that you bought that is advertised to have that feature but doesn't because the company decided to be greedy. So we decided to send that back. We weren't going to use it. We weren't going to compromise our network by having to create an account on a remote website a remote company website in order to be able to access our router that is a security hole that's a very big security hole and TP-Link they have a big security hole they have a, a proprietary uh, tech for it's supposed to allow access to the you know, internet of things networks and sort of thing and it's all proprietary but you can't turn it off you can't turn the feature off and so it's a big security hole and they're a Chinese company which that's another problem in its own right so we didn't go TP-Link now we use we use TP-Link switches they've got some really good switches here um, we may or may not switch out of these but you know these are not managed switches so they shouldn't have back doors in them but we don't want to compromise our network. I mean, we don't have anything to hide, but at the same time, we don't want to have backdoors into our network. Nobody does. Nobody should allow that. So, my advice to you, if you're, if you are um, getting new network gear, and if you whether you're a YouTuber or not, someone who does YouTube videos like us, which you know, kind of does YouTube videos, um, but who does it more than me, or just you're just your average Joe or average Jane or average Joe on the internet, don't get something that will compromise your network because these companies are getting hacked all the time. And their websites with their accounts will get hacked and that will give them access to your router settings. And you don't want that. That's a huge security hole. Why are they allowing this? They're supposed to be able to, you know, these routers are supposed to provide you with, with protection. And they have this gaping hole in their security by requiring you to sign into a remote website in order to access your settings that's inconscionable to me that is if I were still working on in corporate IT we would chunk that thing out the door would go screw that we're not using that thing call up Cisco oh I no no we're not going to compromise our security because you want to be greedy because you want to charge money for certain services on on a router that were on your previous routers and now you're charging money for because you want to be greedy it's not gonna work and they're getting away with it because your average user to your average internet user your average gamer or your average internet user doesn't understand that they're getting screwed and that they are compromising their privacy their security by allowing some kind dialing this huge gaping hole in their network by having this remote account just to access the router settings that should not ever be now this new one we're getting it is um micro tick it's a weird pronounced spelled name uh, it is enterprise grade i mean this thing has its own open source operating system in it that is uh 
fairly complicated. Now, Tiger and I are a bit more technically inclined. We're capable of configuring this thing. Tiger even more so than me. Because he, he dealt more so with uh, network um, tech you know, in professional IT than I did. I was mostly at workstations uh, when I did IT work. So he was more network stuff. I was more you know, working with Windows and fixing problems with Windows than he was. But uh, he's going to be configuring it. And he said, this thing is powerful. This thing is enterprise grade. Uh, it's not quite Cisco grade, where you have to have like certifications to even understand what some of the features are. But he said he, had, he would have to do some research to make sure that he configures it correctly. But he said it would definitely be able to do what we are wanting it to do. Be able to have the security features that we're wanting to have for our own home network, you know, to keep our stuff safe. Because we've got, you know, we've got important stuff stored on server, our own home computers, you know, financial and, and all that other stuff that we want to keep safe. So we'll be able to do that. And then we'll have um, the ubiquity um, access point, which will pretty much cover the entire house. And if if we have to get more than one, because um, those devices are designed to be able to bridge together, so we can put one in our man cave here, what we call the man cave, which is our theater room, which is not so much a theater room anymore because we had to sort of dismantle it because we were going to move. And oh, that um, that blew apart. So now we're going to have to move later than we wanted to. And we'll be able to put a another one in if we have to so that the Wi-Fi will reach the Tiger's room on the other side of the house but uh, I've seen I'm familiar with the uh, ubiquity devices Linus Tech Tips uses them I've seen a lot of other people use them they're they're fairly reliable they're fairly they're fairly good devices for what we're needing so uh, they should this it should have a strong enough Wi-Fi signal to reach his room Especially if we put it up high. They're designed to be put up on the ceiling. So we'll probably mount it there. And they might. Uh, because it has to be connected uh, via a separate cable. It's not a part of the router itself. We might be able to actually put it in the middle of the house. Put a, um, a cable line you know, along the wall. And put up high on maybe on a wall or on the ceiling our ceilings are slanted maybe on the wall and then it will be able to serve the entire house and provide us with Wi-Fi for our phones which we don't have right now that's a problem because uh, we we keep our data usage down by using Wi-Fi all the time we don't it's not like we do stuff on our phones all the time but whenever I'm making dinner and I'm the only guy that can touch the kitchen without blowing it up uh, I like to listen to music I put on uh, digitally imported or I will tune in to this week in tech and listen to what's going on there while I'm making dinner so uh, that's what's going on uh, that's why I haven't been live streaming because well we're on an old router that we need to replace that wasn't designed for doing what it's wasn't wasn't configured properly for doing what we're doing and it's old this thing is older than the the black hawk that we had that died so we need to get off of this thing uh, quickly and it's a netgear which is a product we're getting away from Anyway, again, if you are getting a new router for your home network, as I said, do your research. Make sure that 
the router that you get you know is something that you can configure if you if you don't know much about routers you don't know much about um, networking and you don't want to sit down for hours reading manuals and and um, websites to figure out how to do it so make sure that you do some research to find out if the router you're buying forces you to sign into a web remote website in order to reach the settings if it does do not buy it it is a huge security <clears throat> it's a huge security hole because these companies are getting hacked all the time they will get your access data and they will get control of your router and you do not want that and they will be able to do you know anything with it they'll be able to put you on a botnet or, or anything on your on your network so you don't want that so again do your research as a, as a you know, smart consumer make sure that you're getting something that can't be accessed where if it does have a feature where you have to create an external account make sure it's optional that you don't have to use that that they're not you're not forced into doing it um, some prosumer routers um, a lot of them now have phone apps and that requires a external account to be able to access that to be able to manage your router on a phone now the one we're getting has um, cloud features from the manufacturer but it's completely optional so we don't have to use it so we don't have to sign in to an external site if we want to use that router so we can just immediately you know sign on to it with the default username and password change the username and password and then just work with the um, operating system itself to configure things again do your research and avoid routers that are that say gamer on it you're paying a high price for those avoid ones that that and do your research make sure that they don't force you to sign into an external website in order to access the, the settings that you're not forced into that and especially avoid uh, routers and brands that force you to pay a monthly fee in order to get services like QoS quality of service which improves your connection speed for gaming avoid those like the plague remember do your research a smart consumer is a better consumer you know don't just rely on what the marketing speak is on the ads for these products or their Amazon pages actually ask questions go to forums go to the Linus Tech Tip forums ask questions there say you know be smart about the questions you're asking you know this ask about this this and this and there are some smart people there who will be able to answer your questions most within a reasonable time again do your research so you don't get burned so that when one of these companies get hacked you don't get viruses on your machines or you don't get put on a botnet or you don't get your data and privacy stolen I have been Mike Dezorch thanks for watching and stay safe All right, and thank you for watching and don't forget to check me out on my social media links uh, also uh, don't forget to visit www.zorchcentral.com that is my website as there you will see notifications of new videos for Zorch Central as well as Gamers Bay and you'll be able to access all of my channels on other platforms such as BitChute and Facebook and Twitter I'm not Twitter, Twitch, Freudian slip. And also, you'll get links to the Gamers Bay community that we're associated with over on MeWe. MeWe is a 
social media network that takes your privacy seriously. They don't sell your data. They don't run ads. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Why are you still here? Bye. I said bye. All right. Go. Don't you have anything else better to do?